Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless luke 21 25 and there will be signs in the sun in the moon and in the stars and on the earth distress of nations with perplexity the sea and the waves roaring one of the many signs we are living in the last days right before the return of jesus christ is nations will be in a state of perplexity or uncertainty over what to do in a difficult situation. This is exactly what is happening in our world today. Outside of the Peruvian Congress, chants, stones, and tear gas. Inside, the president they're protesting against gave the traditional Independence Day address after months of instability in the Latin American country. Dina Boluarte is in power because her predecessor, Pedro Castillo, was stripped of office after his attempt to dissolve Congress and rule by decree. But many want a new democratically elected leader, and her gone. There have been months of bitter, fatal protests. I come from the Puno region and we have more than 80 dead. But this murderous government doesn't listen. Dina Boluarte has taken the presidency by force. She doesn't represent us. She's killing our sons. Tensions were high on the streets of Lima Friday as protesters trying to reach Congress were pushed back and tear gassed by police. It's a fresh outburst of demonstrations calling for President Dina Boluarte to resign. Anger is also mounting over the deaths of schools of protesters killed months ago in clashes with security forces. I have come to demand justice because I have massacred my son, who was only 18. She is leading the country to chaos, to an abyss. She does not respect human rights. She is trampling on them with authority, with the police. As well as the president's resignation, demonstrators want a new constitution, the dissolution of parliament and early elections. Congress, though, has rejected three proposals to hold a vote this year, with the parliament deeply divided. They came in their tens of thousands to Bangladeshi capital. Opposition leaders, activists and other groups, all demanding the resignation of the government. They say the last two elections were fraudulent. From our mass rally, we have one demand, that is Sheikh Hasina's government must step down. It's not just the party members who are here, mass people have also gathered. Many have come from different parts of the capital and the country to take part in this rally. That's despite a repeated crackdown by police. Hundreds of opposition activists and leaders have been detained since Tuesday. Despite intimidation and harassment from the police, taking risks of our lives, we have been able to gather here to demand our rights. Everyone is enraged as their rights and freedom have been curtailed under the government. The opposition here has held a number of rallies and road marches across the country and in the capital since beginning of the month. Many people are also angry at the government for failing to stop soaring energy and food prices. Supporters of the governing Aumi League party also held a large rally in Dhaka on Friday, just a few kilometers from the opposition rally. The political climate here appears to be increasingly confrontational ahead of general elections later this year. For years, General Abdurrahman Chiani led a guard that protected Niger's president, Mohamed Bazoum. He's now unseated him and replaced him. The self-appointed leader has dissolved Niger's constitution. In an exclusive interview with Al Jazeera, a presidential advisor says Chani is jeopardizing more than politics. So far, blood has not been shed, but the statements of the coup leader are dangerous and can aggravate the situation. More will begin to question the legality of recruiting hundreds of soldiers. This may lead to an outbreak of an ethnic conflict. The people of Niger reject the military coup and mostly support President Mohamed Bazoum. Supporters of General Chiani warn any foreign military intervention will lead to chaos.
The international community says it's here for us. We don't want them here. We don't want its moral lessons. It's no longer credible in the eyes of Africans. Tiani's self-appointment came after chaos and demonstrations gripped the capital Niamey after Wednesday's coup. Crowds set fire to cars and buildings near the headquarters of Bazoum's party. Two years into his presidency, demonstrators say the deposed president didn't do enough. Many Western allies disagree. They insist Niger needs military support from the U.S. and France to fight the expansion of armed groups linked to al-Qaeda and ISIL. Niger may have a new leader, but its political uncertainty still looms across the West African region. Chad's president is meeting Niger's coup leaders to negotiate a peaceful end to the crisis. It follows an ultimatum issued by the West African regional bloc warning coup leaders to reinstate the president within one week or face military action. Coup supporters gathered in their thousands in the capital Niamey. Some of them attacked the embassy gates of the former colonial power France. What started as a peaceful protest by pro-coup supporters in Niger against France turned into this. They came out in their thousands in the capital and some tried to break into the French embassy. Chanting down with France, their message to the former colonial power was clear to not meddle in Niger's affairs. I would like to say to the European Union, the African Union and ECOWAS, please stay out of our business. The people are suffering in this country. We shouldn't be living like this. We're coming out to support the forces because they're here to bring us balance. After Wednesday's coup, the head of the Presidential Guards Unit, General Abdurrahman Chiani, declared himself Niger's new leader. But France, an ally of ousted President Mohamed Bazoum, has condemned the takeover, along with the EU and the West African regional bloc. ECOWAS leaders have gathered in neighbouring Nigeria for an emergency summit. The bloc has called for the immediate reinstatement of President Bazoum. I believe that all means will be used, if necessary, to restore constitutional order in Niger. But ideally, everything should happen in peace and harmony. For their part, the coup leaders say they took power because of the lack of security, economic troubles and corruption. And they are warning against what they say is an imminent threat of military intervention by ECOWAS forces. The objective of this meeting is to agree a plan of aggression against Niger through an imminent military intervention in Niamey in collaboration with African nations, not members of the organization and certain Western countries. The EU and France have already suspended security cooperation and financial aid to Niger, with France warning that any attack on its nationals will have consequences. At least 40 people were killed and more than 100 wounded after a powerful bomb exploded at a political rally in northwestern Pakistan. The explosion on the outskirts of Kar, the capital of the Bajor district, ripped through a crowd of supporters of hardline cleric and political leader Molana Fazlur Rahman. Many of the wounded were taken to the city's main hospital, with some of the injuries described as critical. No one immediately claimed responsibility for the attack, but the Islamic State group operates across the border in Afghanistan. The Kukis in Manipur state are taking up arms. Improvised weapons manufactured for a makeshift militia. Members of this mostly Christian minority group are standing guard. They fear more attacks from the Meite, the predominantly Hindu group that has them greatly outnumbered. When they attack us, we fire. Not far away, Meite are also taking up weapons. Their villages have also been attacked. They blame the Kukis. Women are among those keeping watch at this roadblock. They say their community is showing restraint. If we start thinking that the government is not looking after us, then our men will take up arms. This will definitely lead to war with guns. So that is why we want peace. We all want peace. Both sides have a long history of violent clashes and deep-running ethnic tensions. That erupted in May when a court ruling threatened the Kuki's long-standing protections, 
including land rights. Troops were deployed with a shoot-on-site policy and a curfew imposed to keep the peace. But the Kuki don't trust the Meite-dominated state police and resist the army's campaign to disperse their militias. As the coffins pile up, bitterness is growing. Where mixed communities once existed, many have left to live with their own as the cycle of violence goes on. A humanitarian crisis worsening in Haiti, violent gangs overpowering police and now pushing out Americans. The U.S. State Department now ordering all U.S. government employees, non-emergency personnel and their families to leave the country, citing the kidnapping, crime, civil unrest and poor health infrastructure. The order following a travel advisory from the U.S. Embassy in Haiti on Thursday advising all U.S. nationals to leave the country immediately due to escalating clashes between gangs and police in Port-au-Prince. According to a U.N. report, gangs control almost 80 percent of the capital and have already forced more than 165,000 Haitians to flee their homes. This week, those who couldn't flee desperately seeking safe refuge outside the U.S. Embassy. The gangs just shoot and take control of the area. They took our house and now we're on the street, said this woman camping outside. Yet the group was later removed by police. The Caribbean country has been in free fall since the assassination of President Juvenel Moise two years ago, which left a state without an effective government. I've seen the situation for myself. Conditions are desperate, but solutions are possible if we act now. Amid the crisis, the U.N. also attempting to distribute humanitarian support after a report found that more than 5 million people require aid to survive. Making matters worse, data indicates violent crimes, including homicide and rape, more than doubled in 2023 compared to last year. A critical time for a country rapidly deteriorating into chaos. Is global chaos the new normal? As anyone can plainly see, the world is in a state of decay, moral, economic, political, every way possible. People are saying the world is out of control and looking for someone, anyone, to rescue the planet. Soon, very soon, a leader will appear on the horizon that appears to have all the answers, to calm the oceans, to bring peace to all the nations. His title will be the Antichrist, and he will be welcomed by millions of those on earth not taken with the rapture. Unfortunately, his true identity will be known soon to those left behind, but his true intentions are death, destruction, and control. So yes, global chaos is the new normal. Until the Lord Jesus Christ comes at the end of the Antichrist's seven-year reign of terror and establishes true peace on earth, it seems like a good time for Satan to present the lawless one to the world. 2 Thessalonians 2, 7 through 12. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion, that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. If you think this world is going to get better, or if you think there is going to be world peace, if you are waiting for utopia, then you will be disappointed big time. As we are hurtling toward Armageddon. The Bible says that there will appear a character on the world stage, an individual known as the man of lawlessness. He will make false promises of world peace, harmony, and hope. He will lull the world into believing in him even worshiping him as their Messiah. But he will end up abusing humanity like they have never been tormented before.
Christians know him as the Antichrist. After a brief temporary success, he will be defeated and destroyed by our coming King Jesus Christ, our true Savior. Just as he promised, Jesus will return to judge the living and the dead and take his true followers to heaven. He is coming for us, and it won't be long. He could come in the next minute or the next week or the next year. He is coming soon. Are you ready? Matthew 24, 6 and 7. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. To word from the White House that it will help Taiwan counter China with a military aid package worth $345 million. It is historic, and ABC's Mary Alice Parks is following it all from Washington. This is big and historic, and the big question now, how will China respond? What makes this package so unique is that the U.S. is drawing on its own stockpiles, sending U.S. equipment straight to Taiwan, which allows this kind of machinery to move a lot faster instead of sending money to Taiwan to buy new weapons. This is a very similar strategy the U.S. has used with Ukraine. Now, we are told this package includes anti-armor and air defense systems. Lawmakers have been pressuring the administration to move quickly to counter threats from China. They authorized up to a billion dollars in this sort of weapons aid for Taiwan this year. China views Taiwan, which has its own democratic government, as its territory. And we have seen Beijing really increasing the military threats even this last month sending dozens of warplanes and Navy ships around the island. But, of course, the U.S. has promised and is, and is committed by law to helping protect Taiwan. Uh, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said overnight that this is really a defense package. It's clearly designed to help deter any kind of attack on the island. Fighting is intensifying in the southeast where Ukrainian troops are claiming advances. ABC's chief foreign correspondent Ian Panel joins us live now from Dnipro, Ukraine. This is where Russian missiles struck last night. What you're looking at is a residential apartment high-rise complex, as well as the security services building over there. And you can hear the sound of the clearance operation underway. Nine people were injured here, including two children and a 77-year-old grandmother. The strike, though, came just hours after this. Strikes inside Russia. Moscow accusing Ukraine of firing missiles, seen in videos circulating online. More than a dozen people reportedly injured in the city of Taganrog and in nearby Azov, another Russian city, another strike inside Russia. Online video there showing smoke rising from what officials claim was an intercepted missile. And these tit-for-tat airstrikes come as Ukraine says its forces are advancing on the battlefield. They've liberated the strategically important village of Staromayorsk in the east. A video released by the Ukrainians shows that area in total ruins. A testament, I guess, to the ferocity of the fighting there. And in the south of the country, Ukraine stepping up its almost two-month-old counteroffensive. And what they're trying to do is drive a wedge into the Russian front lines. But these advances come at a terrible price. Many soldiers losing their lives and much Western-supplied equipment like tanks and American-made armoured vehicles have been destroyed. I think with increased pressure on the battlefield, more attacks on the cities, what we're potentially at is the start of a new phase of this war. But the price in blood and treasure, Geo, is enormous. Those reports that China may have planted malicious software and key utility systems supplying U.S. military bases around the world. The possibility likely to increase recent tensions between Washington and Beijing. This morning, a new report from the New York Times saying the federal government is urgently trying to find cyber malware that could be catastrophic for U.S. infrastructure and military readiness. A National Security Council official telling ABC News in a statement, the Biden administration is working relentlessly to defend the United States from any disruptions to our critical infrastructure, including by coordinating interagency efforts to protect water systems, pipelines, rail and aviation systems, among others. In May, the Biden administration issued a bulletin acknowledging that they have seen an increase in Chinese state-sponsored cyber activity. 
writing that this activity affects networks across U.S. critical infrastructure sectors. The cyber threat, just one piece of the strained relationship between the U.S. and China. In June, that near collision of a U.S. and Chinese ship in the Taiwan Strait. And in May, a Chinese fighter jet flying directly in front of a U.S. jet midair. Secretary of State Antony Blinken saying the U.S. is working to try to keep things peaceful. A man I believe who is alive and well today will soon come on the world scene seeming to have all the answers. And he will bring a false peace to the nations of the world. Three and a half years after this man comes on the world scene, his true intentions will become known. He will bring war the likes of this planet has never seen. And with war will come famine, pestilence, and death. The Bible refers to him as the Antichrist, and he will be welcomed by millions of those on earth not taken with the rapture. Unfortunately, his true identity will be known soon to those left behind that his true intentions are death, destruction, and control. What do we know about the Antichrist? The Antichrist has many names. The King of Fierce Countenance, the Prince who is to come, the Beast, the Son of Perdition, the Worthless Shepherd, the Man of Sin, the Lawless One. The first sealed judgment in the book of Revelation is the releasing of the Antichrist upon the earth. Revelation 6, 1 and 2. Now I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a voice like thunder, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a white horse. He who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. The Antichrist will be evil, yet appear as a savior. He will be outspoken and have great speaking ability. He will have a fierce countenance. The Antichrist will be extremely proud. He will not desire women. He will be a military genius. The Antichrist will be mortally wounded. He will be indwelt by Satan. He will come from a revived Roman Empire. The Antichrist will control a one world government. He will control a one world religion. He will control a one world monetary system known as the mark of the beast. It is evident that planet earth is in the time Jesus refers to as the birth pains. The world is seeing death, destruction and despair at unprecedented levels. The events the world is suffering through right now, awful as they are, will only get worse. The Bible tells us in the last days, right before Jesus returns, there will be a time of severe distress this world has never seen or ever will see again as we read in Matthew 24:21. For then there will be great tribulation, just as it has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. This time of distress Jesus is referring to is called the seven year tribulation in which the inhabitants of planet earth who have rejected God and remain unrepentant in their sin will face his wrath. These terrible judgments are pictured as seven seals opened, seven trumpets blown, and seven bowls poured out. The first four of the seven seals are known as the four horsemen of the apocalypse. The book of Revelation tells us when Jesus breaks the first seal and the white horse rides, the Antichrist will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the second seal, and the red horse rides, war will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the third seal, and the black horse rides, famine will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the fourth seal, and the pale horse rides, death and Hades will be unleashed. The Bible tells us 25% of the population of the earth will be killed at this time, as we read in Revelation 6-8. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was death, and Hades followed with him, and power was given to them over a fourth of the earth, to kill with the sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. The population of the world is roughly 8 billion, meaning 2 billion people will die during this time. The remaining 17 judgments of God include devastating earthquakes, cosmic disturbances, scorching heat, meteors, 100 pound hailstones, volcanic eruptions, loathsome sores on those who take the mark of the beast, the seas, rivers, and springs of water turn to blood, demons torturing mankind, and a 200 million strong demonic army who will kill another third of mankind, bringing the total to 4 billion. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. It's over.
I came back right now, would you make it? Hell is a real place, and I don't want you to go there. We've been reporting on the bizarre phenomenon that seems to be taking place not just in this country, but all over the world. Getting angry at God isn't going to solve anything. Don't but dad me, young lady. I didn't say you can see that boy when we get to church. This is not the way it's supposed to be. We not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then Jesus said, I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Este ha sido una mañana muy espantosa de un catástrofe después del otro. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So robes and positions and titles and classifications and auxiliaries and departments and works and paying your tithe and paying your dues will not save you. We are still experiencing the aftershocks of the massive earthquake that have devastated this entire region. But if you want to be raptured, you must be born again. You must be washed in the blood of the Lamb. It's so much. We've all been left behind. <laughs> it's going to be joyful for those who are raptured, but it's going to be sad for those who are left behind. Life, life as we know it. You swore to me that you were going to get yourself together and start coming to church with me. Not today, okay? I'll go with you next Sunday. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A, admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, Repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.